Okay, so the drawing that I think I'm going to work from, and I gave many versions, is going to be probably this one and a combination of this one. So these two versions I'm going to mix together, okay? So these two, I'll probably mix together because I like what's going on with that eye, but I like the blackness here, okay? And I like what's going on on this beak, and I like some things on this beak. So it's a combination of both, both things. So I'll leave these as references on the side so I can look at them while I work. Now you can use your Chromebook for reference To look at these as you draw. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is start off with my white charcoal pencil. And I just want to simply draw just like a vertical axis through the center of the paper. Real light. So that I could see from one side to the next. All right, so my center is a little off here. So here's my center right here. And what I wanna do is start sizing up the face sort of symmetrically, all right? So using the reference of the first one, I could see that the eye give myself a little bit of a parameter here, how wide I should draw. Okay, the eye would be about right here. Now you can also work in pencil if you want, but I see that the eye has a basic shape like this because I like it slanted down. It gives the, the, the ego a menacing look. So I'm just gonna draw a shape like this, almost like a diamond shape right here. I'm gonna come over on the other side. And this one is a little bit lower. So I just draw that same shape. And this helps me block in the eyes. All right. Now I could go back and rub this out really easy with my finger, but you're gonna use your blending stump and you're gonna use your kneaded eraser. And then I see how the fur comes in and it helps build the beak, like right in here. So try this with me. And then I see the beak itself. And I'm just going to do a basic shape, like another diamond or triangle shape, just about like this. And it runs right off the page because the cropping is like that. 
All right, now I want to place an oval right in here. It represents the eye. And another one over here. And the cool thing about animals, when you draw animals, it doesn't have to be like perfect because you can see more of, of the oval over here and less of it over here because of the fur, the feathers. And then I want to put in that iris. Now an eagle's eye is extremely interesting because it's it has it's a very strong eye the eagle could see many many miles from the earth when it flies and it's amazing how the dear lord made the eagle's eye so i want to take a second here and get the shape of this iris and pupil now I noticed that there's a little bit more of an iris shape here and it's thinner here. So thin and it opens up over here. So I'm always making adjustments in the way I draw. And all of this is done with the white charcoal pencil. Okay. Now the fun part comes where I start actually indicating some of the feathers. So you can literally start drawing with that white charcoal hatching lines like this that represent some of the feathering that you would see coming off the top of the eagle's eye here as it runs right into the eye. Now this whole area is black. Now, you can work one side and then work the other side, but eventually you're going to slow down and work one side really good. But right now, I'm just working both sides simultaneously. So I do something on this side, do something on that side. Now, I'm looking at the value of this whole thing. I know that there's a lot of white at the top of the eye in the top part of the eagle's face, should I say. So I'm just putting small hatch lines right now in a directional way to indicate the way the feathers kind of work their way down. And then they work up like this a little bit. So this is all kind of cool the way you draw your feathers so just don't draw feathers any kind of way have a purpose of how you put them down let's put some over here and you can space them out like this so it's a directional pull and I'm drawing very lightly. I'm not drawing hard at all because less is more on the white with the white charcoal on black paper. Now when I get to the middle, watch this. They kind of do this. Some feathers go like this and then some feathers go like this on the other side. They kind of gather together in the middle like that. And then they start coming on top of the beak. And this all helps build that structure that's above the eye region of the eagle.
Now, I want to start drawing a few feathers at the bottom. And some of these feathers are longer. They almost look like whiskers. And as I get around the beak, I draw a few like that. Now, as I stated before, the area above the eye of the eagle is very bright. So I want to start building that up. So I'm putting more chalk down and and the whole time I'm paying attention to where I want to put the emphasis of the light because I see a lot of light source coming in this area so you're just putting hatch marks and building it up Okay, now I want to do a little bit of work right in the beak area. So with my central axis here, to keep things vertical and symmetrical, I know that there's an opening for the nostrils. And it's sort of like that. Then I see a little bit of a structure like this that comes around. It comes around like this. And this actually helps start forming the mouth of the eagle, which comes right off like that. I draw some. These almost remind me of whiskers because they're longer at the bottom here on this one reference. And then there's short lines here. And then there's a top to the lip. And there's also a bottom to the lip. Now I'm going to go back with my black charcoal because that's going to really help pop things. Notice how that I'm working both sides of the drawing, but eventually I'm going to slow down and work one side only. Now, down the center of the beak, I want to put this nice highlight. So with just a little bit of hatching, down the center of the beak, I add this. Because I'm going to go back with my blending stump and really make that pop. Then I see a little bit more of reflective over here. In here.
Now, all of this is helping me build up my reference so that I can start pushing another important value, which is going to be the black. Because I really want these eyes to pop and these nostrils to pop. But right in this area here, I want to start adding these like little radius lines inside of the iris. These little fine lines. And I put them in a, a radio kind of effect where I just let them flange out right around that iris and the pupil. And I come in a little bit more and I can add a little bit more white charcoal in certain parts and really make this start working. So I'm controlling the light source with the white charcoal by adding more. Just like that. Okay, now I want to start introducing black charcoal at this point. So I want to get in here and really pop this pupil. So a thing that you want to do when you're working white charcoal or any charcoals is always have a slip sheet. So I want to rest my hand on a piece of paper. So with this black charcoal, I'm going in here adding another dark. The paper is black, but this really helps. Now, I haven't used my blending stump at all yet. That's coming real soon. And I want to go around the iris with this black line. And that helps set up this eye. Now, what I want to do is start putting in this dark right inside this dark area around the eye iris. And I'm using hatch lines. Now notice I'm leaving a little bit of the, the black paper around here because there's two values going on. I have the value of the charcoal pencil and the value of the black paper. And it really adds to the, the whole look of the piece where you see two different values. And it's really important that you, you get this. And I can bring this black right into some of the area of the drawing. Into some of the feathering area, like right in here. 
Now, I know that there's a nice highlight right in this pupil and iris. So I'm going to put that in there nice and bright. Just like that. Uh, this is where I start working some of the magic of pushing values. And I haven't even used my charcoal, my, my blending stump yet. So I just want to make a point of that because that's coming real soon. But I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm adding enough medium on here so that I'm controlling the look of the piece. And the layering of feathers on top of feathers. So you have this feathering structure on top of that feathering structure. And the way I'm doing that is that I'm making the hatch lines on top of each other. So this group of feathers work on top of that group of feathers. So you have a different value. So this is brighter. This is less bright. And I'm keeping in mind the stroke as it works around the top of the beak. And you can see this is starting to come together. Okay, now at this point, I could go in with my blending stump, and I want to make sure that I have a clean side and you have a dark side. So with the clean side, I rub it on a piece of paper to make sure it's clean. And now I smooth out some of these feathers. Just blend them out gently don't overdo it some people say well can i use my finger yeah you can use your finger if your fingers are clean but just be careful that you don't have any oils on your hand and what this does it just softens the look And I know that there's going to be a dark area right up under the iris. In here. And this puts a little cast shadow from the eye right onto the iris.
and then you see little pops and little highlights and this can set the drawing off just a few of these I'll call them a little blings So you bling it up a little bit. All right. Now I can keep working on this and I will, but I'm going to stop at this point and uh, assess what you're doing. Now, right here in this nostril area, I can start adding. The dark here. And I know that there's a little bit of tone, light tone. So I put this down light, really, really light. And I know on this side, it's a little brighter. just love rendering I could keep working on this but I'm I'm going to stop at this point to let you catch up and we could talk about a few things so my next step is to work on the beak more to show how all of this comes to play and how all this works out Okay, we'll come back to this. So that's what we got started so far.